The Port Harcourt Maiduguri Railway will translate to reactivation of economic activities along the Eastern Corridor. Nigeria's longest railway from Port Harcourt to Maiduguri makes its way to President Buhari's development map. Take advantage of the trade opportunities Buhari encourages industrialists. All our facilities are in order. All what it requires for us to start this vaccination. One step forward in the battle against COVID-19 in Nasarawa State, Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine arrives, while Kano State prepares ahead. It is said that women hold up half the sky. Plus, the Women's Day is over, celebrations still on. Women receive presidential treat as House of Reps prepare a legal weapon against gender-based violence. Hello, good evening. This is NTN Network News, reaching you live from Abuja. I'm Joseph Johnson. Dotun Ugunyemi joins me from Lagos. Work has formally commenced on the rehabilitation and reconstruction of Port Harcourt to Maiduguri Eastern Narrow Gauge Railway Project, Bonny Deep Sea Port and Railway Industrial Park, Port Harcourt. President Mohamed Buhari, who performed the groundbreaking ceremony for the project virtually, urged manufacturers and industrialists within the zone to take ma maximum advantage of the critical infrastructure by building new factories towards enhancing the nation's economy. State House Correspondent Adam Masambo has the report. The reconstruction of the Port Harcourt to Maiduguri narrow gauge railway project with new branch lines to Aweri, Imo State, and Damaturu Yobe State is aimed at resuscitating the once vibrant railway transportation in the eastern corridor of the country. The Boni Deep Sea Port and Railway Industrial Park, Port Harcourt, on the other hand, will not only serve transportation and supply chain networks for domestic needs and export, but also support imports into the hinterland of the country through the Boni Island. The project, President Muhammad Buhari said, will enhance significantly the country's inspiration for nationwide transport infrastructure, especially the railways. The Port Harcourt, Maiduguri Railway, will translate to reactivation of economic activities along the Eastern Corridor, which has been greatly affected by insurgent activities and serve as a stimulus for industry and trade. The connection of the railway to a new seaport in Boni Island and Railway Industrial Park Port Harcourt is designed to increase the viability and boost transmission of cargo and freight locally across the West African sub-region and in the continental free trade area. 85% of the railway project is to be funded through a loan facility as well as 15% counterpart contribution by the federal government. The sum of the social, economic, and environmental benefits of these projects includes creation of massive employment locally. In addition, there will be further utilization of local contents and technology transfer, increase in internally generated revenue, and will serve as fulcrum for the achievement of the federal government planned integrated development master plan. Transportation Minister Rotimi Amechi said apart from the reconstruction of the narrow gauge railway project, approval has also been granted by President Muhammad Buhari for the construction of 1,500 kilometers of standard gauge rail line for the Eastern Corridor. Goodwill messages were presented by the Plateau State Governor Simon Lalong, members of the National Assembly, and a representative of the Southeastern States. From the State House, Adam Musambo, NTA News. 
Meanwhile, Minister of Transportation Chibuke Rutimiamechi and stakeholders in the railway sector have described the Eastern Rail Line project as the economic hub which will revolutionize the business activities in Nigeria. This was made known at the grand breaking ceremony of the project in Port Harcourt Rivers State. Oinaya Kaluoka reports. The joy of the people knew no bounds. With the coming into reality a project they had long waited for. Something that is very exciting to create job opportunities. If we continue to see all this, the country we know moving forward. The 2044.1 kilometer per circuit to Meduguri narrow gauge is massive. It is linking 14 states from the south south to the southeast and extending down to the north. It's the longest uh, uh, length of track and it's going to cost about 3.2 billion dollars. It is a three-in-one project comprising of the Eastern Narrow Gauge Rail Line, Bonnie Deep Seaport and the Railway Industrial Park in Port Harcourt. Minister of Transportation Chibike Rotimi Amechi, the Governor of Plateau State and the Chairman Northern Governors Forum, Simon Lalong, and the Minister of Labor, Chris Ngige, as well as other dignitaries said the project will bring about massive economic transformation along the corridor and the country as a whole. It's important to note that as Minister for Transport, there are two approvals that we have secured. The first approval is the reconstruction of the narrow gauge rail line as a temporary measure. And the second approval is the construction of a 1,500 kilometers of standard gauge rail line for the eastern rail line. It's going to ease transportation and it also help in boosting the economy of this nation. Less resources than the past governments decided that infrastructure of roads, railways, power will be the cardinal institutions for the government to touch. With 61 stations, the single-track narrow-gauge rail line has maximum design speed of 80 km per hour for the main line and 60 for the branch line. From Port Harcourt, Oinea Kalo Oka, NTA News. To other matters now, Nigeria is to receive £4.2 million sterling from the United Kingdom as part of the stolen funds seized from the former governor of Delta State, Mr. James Ibori. This follows the signing of a memorandum of understanding between the government of Nigeria and the United Kingdom. Femi Okewu has more. Thank you very much. This is the first stream of repatriation of stolen funds from the United Kingdom since a memorandum of understanding was signed between Nigeria and the United Kingdom in 2016. And so, for the first time since the James Ibori trial was concluded in the United Kingdom, during which he pleaded guilty to the misappropriation of funds of Delta State and was sentenced to 13 years in prison, a sum of £4.2 million is to be returned to Nigeria, representing the two countries in the agreement to seal the repatriation of the stolen funds at the Nigerian Justice Minister and the British High Commissioner to Nigeria. British finance experts who helped to secure the funds were also at the meeting. The British High Commissioner to Nigeria gave insight into the processes leading to the seizure of the funds. So these funds that we have secured the return of so far are from the friends and family of James Ibori. The case against James Ibori in terms of the amount to be returned directly from him is still ongoing. But the success of this case, and it is a breakthrough because these cases are extremely complex, is down to really effective mutual cooperation between UK and Nigeria. Just as Nigeria's Minister of Justice stated that the return of the stolen funds is a sign of the confidence of the international community in the way Nigeria has been managing the repatriated funds so far, such as the Abacha loot. The Federal Executive Council has directed that the instant repatriated funds should be deployed towards one, the second Niger Bridge, two, Abuja to Kano Expressway, and three, the Lagos Ibadan Expressway under the coordination of the Nigeria Social Investment Authority to ensure integrity of the process. What Nigerians have been used to hearing is their bachelor loot. 
But now with the first stream of repatriation from the United Kingdom, the James Iberi loot now becomes a focal point. From the office of the Attorney General of the Federation, Femi Okeowu, Engineer. In the meantime, former chairman of the defunct Pension Reform Task Force team, Abdul Rashid Maina, has opened his defense on the corruption allegation against him. The first defense witness, Ngozika Yohoma, while giving evidence before the court, alleged that some head of... Uh, Heads of institutions and individuals have collected different sums recovered by the team. The judge of the Abuja Federal High Court here in the case, Justice Okonabang, issued a subpoena compelling the heads of the institutions and individuals mentioned to appear before the court and testify in the ongoing trial of the former chairman of the defunct Pension Reform Task Force team, Abdul Rashid Maina. The case has been adjourned to the 10th of this month for continuation of trial. Nigeria's Minister of Foreign Affairs, Joe Fuyama, has represented President Muhammad Buhari at the high-level virtually meeting of the African Union Peace and Security Council secure, on securing sustainable peace in Africa. The minister said climate change has continued to de retard development across the board with dwindling opportunities for sustainable peace. Undoubtedly, the subject of climate change vis-a-vis -vis its effect on sustainable peace has continued to dominate public space and discourse in recent years in view of its ravaging impact in the world today. The effects are widely noticeable as it increasingly extends beyond the environmental sphere into the social, political and security realm in which Africa and the world must take a more determined action peace process and enduring a solution in the in the region. This for us is doable with unity of purpose uh, really to avoid uh, to have a future devoid of hostilities. Nigeria will continue to align with a just and durable solution to the conflict that has unfortunately lingered for decades by strongly appealing to all sides to embrace peace at this critical moment. Cameroon has handed out uh, more than 5,000 Nigerian refugees of uh, Borono origin to the Nigerian delegation led by the Borono State Governor Babagana Zulum Mohamed Goni reports. Will we recall that Governor Babagana Omar Zulum had in the last two weeks led a high-level Nigerian delegation to the meeting of the Trafatide Commission comprising delegation from Cameroon, Nigeria and UHSCR in Maro, Republic of Cameroon to work on the practical modalities to ensure a safe and voluntary return of 5,000 refugees in the first phase of the exercise. We have accepted refugees from Nigeria as a result of the Boko Haram insurgency that started some years ago. The Cameroonian government did everything possible so that things should come back to normalcy in the far north region. The minister added that President Folbia has given a big relief package which include mattresses, blankets, food and non-food items to all the 5,000 returnees to strengthen the relationship. Governor Wagana Umara had on behalf of the federal government of Nigeria thank Cameroonian authorities for taking good care of Nigerian refugees in the last six years and appreciated donation made by the president and his family to the returnees and further restated commitment to rebuilding Banki for socio-economic activities to pick up. We have started the repatriation process. We have received the first batch. The government of Nigeria will ensure provision of adequate security in Banki town to safeguard the lives and properties of the returnees. In Banki town, Governor Zilum plucked up presentation of food and non-food items to returning households where male heads were given 30,000 naira, while each woman was given 10,000 naira and a fabric with a call on them to be resilient as government is committed to their security and welfare, as well as creating an enabling environment for them to return to normal life. Some returnees who spoke to newsmen expressed gratitude to their host country and Governor Zilum for facilitating their return. The return of the 5,000 refugees will be done in batches of three to 400 people in compliance with COVID-19 protocol. In Maiduguri, Mahmoud Goni, Inten. Ebiton Security, the Zamfara State Governor Bello Mohammed has emphasized the need for enhanced synergy among the Nigerian armed forces and the provision of adequate modern warfare equipment to the troops for the overall success of the ongoing renewed commitment to ending banditry and insurgency in the country. The governor made the remarks while receiving the new service uh, 
chiefs led by the chief of the defense staff, General Loki Rappo in Guso, Jamilo Ibrahim Asmo. The chief of the defense staff, General Loki Erebo, alongside other service chiefs, was in Zamfara State to assess the ongoing military operations on the Northwest as part of the renewed commitment of the new leadership of the Nigerian Armed Forces to end banditry and other related crimes in the zone. The service chiefs met with Governor Bello Muhammad and some other stakeholders, including traditional and religious leaders at Government House Gusau, where vital issues related to the ongoing effort to address the prevailing security challenges in the state were discussed. The chief of the defense staff says it is time to end the security challenges bedevilings on for the state in the country at large. We, as members of the armed forces, as the instrument of state to ensure that there is peace and security, we will do all in our power. Whilst encouraging those who want to live in peace to actually go about their businesses, those who do not want us to live in peace, we will go after them. Zamfara State Governor Bello Muhammad made case for more modern military hardware and enhanced synergy amongst the armed forces for the success of the fight against armed bandits and other criminals in the country. And the government will support any move as far as it will end this banditry activities. The maiden working visit of the new service chiefs to Zamfara State provided an avenue for stakeholders to identify and provide solutions to some of the perceived challenges of the ongoing military operations in the state and the Northwest geopolitical zone in general. In Gusau, Jamilu Ibrahim, NTA News. Time for some messages. We are back shortly. Stay with us. You're still watching NTA Network News with me, Joseph Johnson. Nigerian women will continue to have pride of place in the renewed drive at enhancing national growth and development by the federal government. President Mohamed Buhari made the pledge while receiving in audience the executive director of the joint United Nations program on HIV and AIDS. State House correspondent Adam Samba reports. President Mohamed Buhari, who described his administration as one of the most gender sensitive, takes pride in entrusting women with strategic positions in government. The Ministry of Finance, Budget and National Planning, he said, is headed by a woman, so also the civil service of the Federation, amongst many others. The President promised that his administration will continue to do its best towards empowering women for nation building. On infrastructural renewal, President Buhari noted that the country lost good opportunities, saying, however, that the present leadership cannot continue to cry over split milk. He said the government is doing its best towards changing the narrative in concert with some developed countries. The UNAIDS Executive Director, Winnie Brahima, who described President Buhari as a national and continental hero, said the exploits by Nigeria in the control of the COVID-19 pandemic and HIV AIDS are quite commendable. While saluting the president's leadership, who she described as very robust and worthy of praise, Mrs. Brahima made a case for Nigeria to be represented at the very highest level during the special meeting on HIV AIDS by the United Nations in June. She said the meeting, which holds every five years, is meant to renew the resolve by the global community towards eliminating AIDS by the year 2030. The executive director noted that Nigeria has great women and stressed the need for more open space for them in active politics. From the State House, Adam Musambu, NTN News. As activities marking the International Women's Day continue this Tuesday, Vice President Yemun Shibajo has further stressed the need for every girl child to have access to education. The Vice President, in a keynote address at a webinar organized by Women in Africa to mark the 2021 International Women's Day, observes that holding down women means holding down their societies. Anchoring his contributions to the theme of the 2021 celebration, choose to challenge. The Vice President uh, describes the reinvigorated campaign for gender equality as the greatest leap of development in contemporary history. The Vice President, who advocated for a change not just in laws but in mindsets and conventions, calls on everyone to choose to challenge biases and misconceptions in favour of a more gender-inclusive world. 
and the House of Representatives has expressed determination of the Ninth House of uh, Assembly to remove all obstacles militating against the development of women through relevant legislation. The Speaker Femi Bajabia Mila reiterated this at an event to mark the International Women's Day. National Assembly correspondent Lamiali reports. With less than 4% of women representation in Nigeria's 469 member bicameral legislature, the International Women's Day provided a platform to seek public support to change the narrative. House Speaker Femi Bajabiamila was philosophical in his address as he made poignant the relevance of women in human development who ironically are denied their rights to achievements by forces of culture and government. It is said that women hold up half the sky. This is intended to reflect the recognition that our world, imperfect as it may be, will be even less, less perfect were it not for the women whose presence and contribution have been the basis of much of human achievement. The chairperson, Commonwealth Women Parliamentarian Zainab Gimba, reiterated that women's involvement in decision-making should be embraced as anything to the contrary is a threat to the future. Even when it comes to elections, uh, we have a lot of challenges in relation to finance, in relation to a lot of other things, and societal values also add to uh, our challenges. In a related development, Chairman House Committee, Women in Parliament said, educating the girl child is the starting point to secure their well-being. We go through our legislative agenda, go and check the education sector there. We are working to make sure that there is a great improvement. The House intends to use the ongoing process of constitutional review to push forth this agenda of dismantling limitations that are of disadvantage to women from the National Assembly, Lami Ali, NCA News. Still staying with uh, women-related stories, the African First Lady's Peace Mission has oh, promised to employ advocacy towards uh, encouraging parents on the girl child school enrollments, especially in northern Nigeria. A special advisor to the President on African First Ladies, Meiro Almakura, stated this as Nigeria celebrates the 2021 International Women's Day in Abuja. Marujana to Adam Said reports. The special assistant to the president on African First Ladies, Mayro Almakura, believes that the mission will motivate parents on the importance of girl child education in Nigeria. She said, despite terrorism and kidnapping, which is instilling fear, parents should have trust in the government, which is trying to protect the girl child at all costs. A reported cases of domestic violence and conflict-related violence against women is an indication that COVID-19 pandemic has affected women in another negative direction. We must not lose sight that gender equality and women's rights are fundamental to the continent's progress on peace, security, and human rights. We commit ourselves to advocate for the right to peace and pr protection for all women and girls across Africa. The African First Lady's Peace Mission celebrates African women who continuously play a crucial role in peace building, gender equality, freedom, protection for all women and girl child in Abuja. Muridana to Adam Said and Tini. Let's turn our attention now to health. Nigerians are capable of developing vaccines to address their health challenges and the federal government will continue to support every effort towards attaining self-sufficiency in health and pharmaceutical services. This position was made known by the secretary to the government of the federation, Boss Mustafa, at the flag off of the health care sector research and development intervention scheme by the Central Bank of Nigeria, where five researchers got 253.54 million naira grants. Lie Katunba Batunde completes the story. The unprecedented outbreak of coronavirus exposed the fragility of the Nigerian health sector. The global lockdown forced countries to look inward for health solutions as trade gradually dwindled. The healthcare sector research and development intervention scheme is part of the Apex Bank's policy response to COVID-19, aimed 
at prompting intense research and development activities towards developing vaccines and drugs against the spread of other communicable and non-communicable diseases. All these adversities would help us recalibrate our health sector along uh, our governance system and also uh, uh, our, our social inclusiveness in terms of development. We need to encourage our brothers and sisters in the academia so that they can, rather than take flight abroad, they can stay back at home and go straight into research that will help our people. Five beneficiaries have emerged with two focusing on herbal solutions. Boosting the morale of our own researchers will create a value chain that has ripple effect in terms of more jobs for our citizens, significant decreased over dependence on advanced nations for vaccines. And it's an encouragement to my young colleagues that got the award. Uh, in terms of moving forward in, uh, for vaccines, this is just a reflection of what is going to happen in the next two years. The central bank is emphasizing the need for a shift from a consumer-based economy to a more productive one in Abuja. Leah Kutung Baba today, NTA News. And Kano state government has designated more than 500 centers for the conduct of COVID-19 vaccination in the state. Governor Abdullahi Umar Ganduje announced this during a sensitization seminar for security personnel on the exercise. Abdullahi Mustafa has details. Security personnel and frontline health workers are among the first set of people lined up for the COVID-19 vaccination in Kano state. Ahead of commencement, the state government organized a sensitization seminar to educate security personnel about the vaccine, considering the key role they play in the COVID-19 response. And if you look at the locations where the vaccine has been massively rolled out, Israel, for example, the United Kingdom, mortality has reduced by over 73%. Governor Abdullah Umar Ganduje, who thanked stakeholders for their support towards getting the pandemic curve flattened, assured of adequate arrangements to ensure the success of the vaccination exercise. He disclosed that more than 500 centers have been designated for the exercise across the state. All our facilities are in order. All what it requires for us to start this vaccination is ready and is certified by the national body. Governor Ganduji also enjoined people to continue to adhere to advisories towards mitigating the spread of the viral disease. In Kano, Abdullahi Mustafa, NTA News. In another development, the Nasarawa state government has taken delivery of 61,300 doses of AstraZeneca, AstraZeneca, I should say, COVID-19 vaccine from the federal government. Abari Solomon reports. The country last week joined the global community in acquiring COVID-19 vaccine to vaccinate all Nigerians against COVID-19 virus. Nasara State has gotten its own share of the first batch of the vaccine, confirming the receipt of the vaccine. The State Deputy Governor and the Chairman of COVID-19 Task Force Committee, Dr. Emmanuel Akabe, and said the vaccines are in safe condition and commended the Federal Government and Presidential Committee on COVID-19 for procuring the vaccines to safeguard the health of Nigerians. I'm happy that we have an adequate storage facility. And I'm told that the storage facility can take over up to four million for those vaccines at any point in time. You can move to any available primary care close to where you are to make sure that you get this vaccine. They also appealed to community and religious leaders, civil society organizations and the media to educate the public on the importance of vaccination against the deadly virus. Frontline workers at the Dalhatu Arab Specialist Hospital Lafia were the first categories of essential workers who benefited from the vaccine in Lafia, Abar Solomon, NTA News. Let's now join Dr. Nogoyemi in Lagos for more reports. Hello, Dr. Joseph, 
As the world continues to grapple with the coronavirus pandemic, the federal government and the Nigerian Institute of Medical Research are still collaborating towards finding a permanent solution to the pandemic. Hingenujan Adams reports that the Institute has recorded another milestone in this journey. I call this state and declare upon the Central Sequencing Laboratory. Minister of State for Health inaugurating a facility established from the federal government COVID-19 intervention fund. The facility houses the next generation sequencer, a critical machine in the battle against the virus and other infectious agents like Lassa fever virus, yellow fever, and Ebola. The machine has a robotic nuclear extraction and sample preparation system to support the country's effort in the real-time monitoring of variants of SARS-CoV-2. What we are witnessing marks another giant step. A step forward in our quest to increase our research capabilities as well as being better positioned to contribute to the knowledge a body of knowledge in the fight against diseases. Director General Naima, Professor Babatunde Salako, says the institute is ramping up sequencing of the virus. What we need to encourage us and other scientists in Nigeria is the political and policy battle for the use of these overall contributions to science. With the facility now functional, it is expected that the health community will work with NIMA to ensure the needed data for public health decisions. In Lagos, Hingino John Adams, NTA News. The fight against fraudulent practices in the nation's financial institutions has heightened as stakeholders continue to brainstorm on ways to curb these malpractices. This was evident at this year's capacity building program for law enforcement agencies in Lagos, organized by the Nigeria Deposit Insurance Corporation. Lynn Lineke has details. Recent reports by the Nigerian Interstate Settlement System, PLC, NIPS, indicates that Nigerian banks lost over 5 million in the space of nine months in the last one year. This figure is within the range of losses which insured institutions suffered for the period. This fraud incident, the Nigeria Deposit Insurance Corporation explained, is not unconnected to the increase in the sophistication of fraud-related techniques as experienced in recent times. The supervisors have to do a lot of catch-up. They have to do a lot of close marking. Since the way the fraudsters are taking the information is within the environment, we as supervisors we also must be very sensitive to the information within the environment, try to bring that in into what we do from day to day. This situation has necessitated a collaboration among relevant stakeholders in the security sector to seek ways of curtailing such crimes capable of causing irreversible damage in the banking system in the country. The conference is therefore to review the upsurge in banking malpractices owing to advancement in technology. Our examiners are always going into the banks and looking at what is going on. So we'll be able to bring some of all this information to the knowledge of these particular uh, law enforcement agencies. And our hope is that with this kind of information and knowledge, they'll be better equipped to carry out their duties. I believe it is going to add more knowledge to our performance and we'll get more uh, results at the end of the day. With the theme, effective investigation and prosecution of banking malpractices that led to the failure of banks in Nigeria, the commission is poised to protect depositors' interests and promote a sustainable and effective financial system in Nigeria. In Lagos, Lynn Lenake, NTA News. And that's it from here. Let's now take a break. <laughs> Thanks for staying with us. And the news continues here in Abuja. And we are heading straight to talk in business. And here is Benny Adams. You're good to go, mate.
Thank you, Joseph, and welcome to Business. The government of the Netherlands seeks the federal government of Nigeria to address issues of insecurity and foreign exchange for investors in the country. The Netherlands ambassador to Nigeria, Harry Van Diet, made the request during a visit to the Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, Adeni Adebayo, in Abuja. The minister said he has commitment from the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria on revisiting the issue of forex for investment. He urged the Netherlands investors to take advantage of the African Continental Free Trade Agreement and the free economic trade zones in the country to invest. Adibayo said the government is providing necessary infrastructure, particularly power supply, at Kano and Calabar free trade zones. And to the capital market, investors lose 371.33 billion naira as NSC All Share Index dips by 1.80% to close at 38,686.85 basis points. Market breadth closed negative as champion led 14 gainers as against 24 losers, topped by UBA at the end of today's session. An unimproved performance when compared with previous outlook. Market turnover closed positive as volume moved up by 64.83% as against 49.92% downtick recorded in the previous session. UBA, Notori and M Benefit were the most active to boost market turnover. MTN Nigeria and UBA topped market value list. MTN Nigeria also leads the list of active stocks that recorded impressive volume spike at the end of today's session. Well, that is business news. Joseph? Thank you, Benny. It's nice doing business with you. So long. <laughs> All right. Have a nice night. All right. Um, moving on, Nigeria and the Republic of Benin are collaborating towards uh, ensuring food sufficiency and ending rice importation. Chief of Staff to the President, Professor Ibrahim Gambari, received a delegation from the Republic of Benin on strategies adopted by Nigeria in rice production. State House correspondent Jidou Nefade reports. State Governor Atiku Bagutu led the leadership of Farmers Association of both countries to the office of the Chief of Staff. This is to further discussions between the associations in order for the two countries to work together towards replicating the successes achieved in the Nigeria's rice program in Benin, with a view to end the importation of rice into West Africa, probably in the shortest time. Addressing the press after the meeting, the Governor who is the chairman of the Presidential Task Force on Rice and Wheat Production, speaks further on the partnership. Partnership within the framework of both the Economic Community of West Africa Agreement and the African, African Continent, uh, Continental Free Trade Agreement. And our brotherly relationship, two presidents, President Muhammad Buhari, uh, President Patrice Talon, who respect each other, who have vision that uh, we can be greater together. Success is, is, is related with the uh, political will that this government has, and that is exactly what they want to learn, so that they will use the same approach to attain the successes like we achieved the successes they have seen to come to us to learn more. Leader of delegation spoke in French, commended Nigeria for the success achieved in its rice production program, and that Benin Republic would like to share from the experience. And the State House, Jide Onifade, NJ News. Let's take you to Rivers State now, where all is set for the inauguration of the 13th floor permanent headquarters complex of the Niger Delta Development Commission NDDC by President Mohamed Buhari. Osinachi Abraham reports that the Minister of Niger Delta Affairs, Senator Goswi Lakbabu, in a media briefing in Port Akat, also unveiled plans for maintenance and sustainability of the edifice. The Niger Delta Development Commission is a federal government agency established by President Olusegun Obasanjo in 2000 with the sole mandate of developing the region. The 13th floor permanent headquarters complex will provide conducive working environment for the workers and visitors that come in for business on a daily basis, saving the commission huge amounts spent annually on rent. They have done more work. In less than three months, before I came in December, he has done more work 
in three months than we probably did in a year. Honestly, day and night, he says, Your Excellency, this your vision will not die. We must stop the payment of the rents. We Chief Executive Officer of the Commission, Efion Okwa, commended President Buhari, Minister of Niger Delta Affairs, governors of the nine NDDC states, as well as the media, for their resilience in ensuring smooth completion of the edifice. Various administrations have gone in, have done their best in ensuring that this project is completed. We, right from supervision, right from the foundation laying the supervision, many, many, so many hands have changed as far as this project is concerned. The NDDC headquarters complex Marine Base has a commercial wing that is built to house other private sector businesses for revenue generation. In Port Harcourt, Osinachi Abraham, NTA News. A public lecture titled Building the Future of Nigeria Through Enterprise and Innovation has held in Abuja in commemoration of the 64th birthday of Vice President Yemi Oshibajo. State House correspondent Jideo Nifade reports that the lecture was organized by a coalition of friends of the Vice President. Nigerians in the diaspora, along with professionals and private sector operators based within the country, collaborate to organize the non-partisan event on Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo's 64th birthday for the dual purpose of honoring the Vice President and inspiring the younger generation to realize their role as the primary drivers of national progress through their entrepreneurial and innovative powers. In building a future for Nigeria, we will all embark on the task of changing our adaptive styles and become more innovative, more flexible, and more friendly. But we are not just here to celebrate the man, but to also celebrate his values, his convictions, and the ideals that he stands for. He's a, he's a determined patriot that is committed to the advancement of the black race, not just Nigeria. I believe the future lies ahead for him for greater things. The vice president described the event as a pleasant surprise. And more surprises await Vice President Oshimbajo's colleagues, aides, and friends, as well as well wishers, converged on the presidential villa to make the day a memorable one for the Vice President. There is this unbelievable empathy when you deal with the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And for this, every staff member is happy today that he is celebrating his 64th you know, birthday. Vice President Oshimbajo appreciates Nigerians for the show of love and for that pledges the commitment to continue serving the people. How deeply uh, indebted I am uh, to the Nigerian people and to so many who have shown so much love and so much affection and so many who across the nation who have wished me a happy birthday. I wish them also uh, not just uh, great birthday, but I pray that the Almighty God will celebrate them as they have also celebrated me. In the State House, GJ Unifade, NJ News. Let's take a very short break. Stay with us. On Tuesday Live tonight, our focus is on COVID-19 vaccine administration in Nigeria. What are the initial coverage areas and the readiness of health workers to cover all the areas without loss of momentum and time? COVID-19 vaccine and issues around them. On Tuesday Live, incisive and educated, every Tuesday at 10.30 p.m. Join us. The Nigerian Television Authority is providing technical support to the Organization of Military Sports in Africa ahead of the Sahel Games for Peace, expected to hold in Nigeria, with eight African countries participating. Defense correspondent Najatu Tijani reports.